Hello and welcome to another one of these ADD videos. Today we're going to be looking at the fundamentals of enzyme kinetics and looking at their equations. Um, the, the basic principle here is we have some enzyme, a protein, that's going to be suited to fit some substrate. So there's your substrates. There's your enzyme, and it looks like it should be able to fit right in there nice and smoothly. And what will happen is you'll form something called an enzyme substrate complex. In which they now have formed bonds temporary they may be, and now they're interacting and the enzyme is doing, doing its work to convert this enzyme substrate into the enzyme again. I wish I hadn't drawn such a complicated enzyme. <laughs> Plus a product. And the product is going to be different than what we had originally. And the enzyme goes back to what it was before it met the substrate. Okay? So, what, what are the kinetics behind it? Well, they're demonstrated if we look at a saturation curve. And this would be the velocity of the reaction. And this is the concentration of the substrate. And what happens, there's a finite number of, of enzymes. So, we start out with every substrate being able to encounter an enzyme but then once they start filling up it starts to taper off and plateau out to a maximal velocity okay this is called an enzyme satur uh, saturation curve And it is hyperbolic in nature. Later on, we'll see that when we have uh, cooperativity and things like that, it changes to a sigmoidal curve. But that's not now. So, let's look at the equations. We have enzyme plus substrate. I guess it's going to be in red. gives you enzyme substrate. Back in the day, in the early 1900s, Michael Smith and a pair of uh, biologists looked at this interaction, which had a forward rate and a reverse rate. And after this form, they said that they could dissociate to form in a subsequent step enzyme plus product. But that was later refined by Briggs and Haldane, and we'll talk about that. Oops. In a second. Okay. But for MM, what they did was they looked at the concept first. I'm going to refresh your memory and a little chemistry. Remember, the rate is equal to some constant of the reaction times the reactants, right? Just a little refresher. So if we use that concept here, the forward reaction has the rate or velocity, however you want to look at it, is going to be equal to K1 times the two reactants, E and S. And then, this is for the velocity of formation, the velocity of the dissociation of the enzyme substrate complex is going to be rate or velocity equals K inverse enzyme substrate. And what Michael Smith was were saying is that the rapid equilibrium
is being achieved and the enzyme substrate complex would form and then dissociate so here we would have uh, VF equals VD and then we would have K1E S equals K inverse ES and if we were to solve for divide by ES on both sides side it cancels the side you're left with divide both sides by k1 and you now have the equation for the rapid equilibrium constant This is KS. Okay. Um, so you might be asked to find this at some point in your problem set or on a test or something like that. Now, the problem with this is we're not looking at the entire picture. Uh, Briggs Haldane came along and said, let's incorporate all of it. Let's look at the enzyme and product inc included. So if we did that, our equations now become So the velocity of formation doesn't change. It's still going to be the K1 and the velocity of dissociation is what does change though. Because we have two dissociations. We have the reverse right? And then we have the enzyme product one. Still, the reactant is enzyme substrate. Okay. And if we were to factor out the ES, and what we have here is we have the concept of steady state assumption um, the steady state states that the enzyme substrate concentration never changes so the way we can look at that is yes. if you remember this is a derivative and that's a rate of change All right. <clears throat> well, what does that mean to you? Well, that means that we need to do some algebra, which I've already started up here. Uh, let's see. Where do I need to go with this? So I need to set velocity of formation equal to the velocity of dissociation. And that was K1... E S and then this one became E S K inverse plus K two. And if we solve for or if we divide by E S again like we did before 
when we're looking at it from Kill Smoon's point of view. Cancels here. Divide both sides by K1. And you have found, ladies and gentlemen, the Mikhail Smith constant. So if we plug that in and continue with the math, ooh, I ran out of space there, didn't I? Um, I'm gonna go over here with that. So if I zoom in, I can create a little bit more space. Part of technology. And then I'm gonna have to Ooh, that's big now. I gotta change the size of my pencil. And I'm going to go off to the side and ask you if this makes sense. The total enzyme concentration is the free floating enzyme E plus what's ever bound to the enzyme substrate complex. So what you can do is you can solve for this E that's in your equation right now and say that it's the total enzyme minus the enzyme substrate complex. And then plug that back in there. Distribute through Multiply by KM on both sides, or ES on both sides. Then add that ES. Sides right here, so we would have K M E S, and then that turn we add it over, cancel it on the left side, leaving us that. Factor out the E S. Take had over factor to figure out what's left. I had this. I factor that, so divide the two, you're left with Km. Same logic, it leaves you S there.
you were really running out of room, huh? So then we have, if we divide both sides by the Km plus S, an expression for the enzyme substrate concentration. And then the velocity of the product formation is what we have to consider. Okay, so we know the velocity of the product being formed over time, rate of change again, is going to be equal to k2 times es. Right, the forward rate, remember this equation we looked at way back here, everything's bigger, let me zoom out so it doesn't look that big. Uh, so, where was it? Here. So, this portion of it right there, if you remember we did that, K2 times ES is how we form that product. So using that logic, now let me zoom it back down into my tiny zoomed in universe, I think I zoomed in too much, so a little bit. So what I do is I come in, no actually I do need to zoom into that level, and plug in what ES is to that expression. So, let me come over here, sorry. I, So I know I have V equals K two E S. We're almost there, guys. Bear with me. V then becomes K two um, enzyme total S over K M plus S. Well, what you have to also remember is that V max is nothing more than K2 times enzyme total. So now we can finally get to the Michaelis Mitten equation. Of that. Okay, will you need to know how to drive it? Nah, I don't think so. What parts are important? Knowing this equation is very important. Mm, let's see what else. Let's zoom out so I can see everything clearer. Um, knowing this equation is very important. Km equals this, Kelsey Newton constant. Uh, knowing this equation is very important, Ks equals K inverse over K1. Knowing what rapid equilibrium is, okay, then knowing what steady state is, no change in enzyme substrate concentration. Would it hurt for you to know all this stuff? Would it give you a deeper understanding? Yeah, it, w it would definitely give you a deeper understanding. Quick side note, notice that if Km, let me zoom back in. If, oh, that's a tough color to write in. If Km equals Ks, or I'm sorry, S, not Ks, uh, then we have an interesting relationship. V will equal V max over 2. Hopefully you see that because you'll have what s plus s two s and the s is cancel and you'll be left with v max over two. All right, so that's just an introduction to enzyme kinetics. Uh, make sure you check out the videos on the different types of graphs will be important in this chapter. Uh, they will allow you to know what types of inhibition are taking place. Also, uh, check out some sample problems that I will be doing here shortly. I hope this has clarified any confusion that you might have. Thank you and have a nice day.